YouTube found a community, who fans, random people on the internet. My name is Giggins, and we are here today to talk about The Who's 1968 release, The Who, Magic Bus, on tour. They weren't, this isn't a, no, it's not a live album. This is a 1974 reissue with My Generation as the second disc. Uh, it's not a gatefold, it's just a single jacket with two records shoved inside. Um, there is an original copy of this album, I believe my brother has one. And um, so I don't have one here in my collection, but I have this one, which I got back when I was in high school, um, which I thought was really cool to have two albums in one set. Um, covered a lot of bases at that time, which I, before we had tracked down the original albums, this was a, uh, a great stopgap to have. Stopgap? Stopgap is what I meant to say. Um, I still do love this collection. I think it's very, very cool. But um, I wanted to cover this album because it's definitely a curio in the Who canon. Um, definitely a cash in from Decca to say, hey, we don't have anything from the Who to put out right now and we'd like to make some money here. Um, so that's what they did. Uh, to which none of the guys in the Who liked it at all. They thought the idea was stupid, they thought the name of the album was stupid, calling it on tour, thinking it's a live album, ripping fans off, the whole bit. Um, the only cool thing about this album, I mean, I think there's a lot of cool things, but one redeeming fact about this album is that it does collect a handful of tracks that weren't available in the States yet. Um, B-sides, singles, EP tracks from England, so in that sense, I feel like it was essential for its time. That said, I think they could have done a better job about it and maybe switched a few songs out with other songs that weren't available on albums yet, but were just singles. So, um, this thing actually did chart. It hit number 39 in December of 1968. It had 10 weeks on the charts, and it did inspire the Direct Hits album over in England, which I'll review at some point as well. Um, you know, a collection of B-sides. But, um, really, this album, the, the thing that, suffer, that suffers the most is its track list. Um, having several tracks on here that were already on albums that people owned, like Run Run Run, uh, the Happy Jack album, uh, Our Love Was, Is, which is they call it on the American one, and I Can't Reach You. While I love those songs, I think they'd be better off just left on those albums. Um, you could have totally put on here like Substitute or I'm a Boy, Whiskey Man, I've Been Away, um, any four of those tracks would have filled up this thing really well to make it like an even six songs on both sides and to now repeat songs that people already owned and take away the on tour thing and just call it Magic Bus to promote the new song and that's it, that would have been a great set um, but you know, it is what it is so let's actually talk about this thing um, why not, so Disguises opens, opens this thing up and this is actually from the uh, Ready Steady Who EP over in England um, this song is so cool. It's definitely got this loud, crashing, dizzying feel. With like back, it sounds like the cymbals are recorded backwards, or you know they were recorded and then played back backwards. Um, I love the really shaky guitars throughout this thing, and that classic early Who vocal, you know, between the the harmonies and the Rogers voice at that time. Um, I've always got a soft spot for this era of the Who. I like the lyrics a lot, just about looking around and saying, "Oh, I guess that's my girlfriend in the audience," or "Oh, maybe she's this person today or that person today." Um, you know, one thing The Who was good at in the early days was having a little bit of fun with their lyrics before things got a little more serious in the later years, but, um, yeah, this song also features a key change at the end, which, uh, they, were, they loved to do. They were big fans of the Kinks, and so key changes happen pretty often, but, um, they happen throughout a lot of this album. <laughs> uh, Run Run Run, you know, the opening track from the Happy Jack album, um, I really like this song. I think it's a heck of a lot of fun. It's got a really nice rubbery guitar vibe to this thing. Real bouncy, springy guitar feel. Um, except for this, like, the stabbing bits in the beginning, the dun 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 dun, dun part. Very cool. Um, but Keith is just beating the crap out of his cymbals. John's holding it down together with a really solid bass line. And I like Roger's vocals on this song a lot. I think they're really controlled and pretty calm. Um, and they're... Eh, maybe not calm is the best word. They're, they're kind of calm, but they're pretty fun. They're controlled. Controlled and fun. There we go. Um, I like the middle break that comes through where they kind of like just break it down and then very cool little atmospheric area to let the song grow. And then a key change. So key change happened. Uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. John does his Boris the Spider voice. And this song is so fun and creepy and weird. Uh, super eerie. Totally a Halloween track. It's right up there with Boris the Spider. Um, the guitar work on this song is fantastic, and the intricate harmonies that they all do with each other are very, very good. Um, you know, they really create that spooky, creepy vibe. Um, 
And it's just a great, it's just a great classic John song as he would develop as a songwriter down the years by the time he would get to his first couple of solo albums where he'd do some like really creepy songs. Um, you know, I love hearing these early versions of his work to see where it would take him down the road. But um, yeah, I love the bass line on this track. Excellent bass work here. Uh, then again, I Can't Reach You from the Who Sell Out, easily one of the standout tracks from that album. Pete's vocals on this song are fantastic, and it's just a nice little song about wanting to be the best person you could possibly be and also try to match this girl that you're just absolutely obsessed with and um, knowing that you'll never be as cool or as, uh, you know, attractive or fun as she could possibly be. You know, your, my, your hair is gold, mine is gray, you walk on grass, it turns to hay. Uh, all these, like, songs about, you know, all these lyrics about going back and forth with how great she is and how not so great the, the uh, protagonist is. Um, there's also a key change. So I just want to throw that out in there. There's also a key change in that song. Uh, Our Love Was, is, as it's known in America. Um, this song is easily one of my favorites, too, from the Who Who's All Out album. Love the guitar work on this thing. The solo on this one is fantastic. This one, I think, is the stereo version of this song. So the solo is really, like, bright and in your face and pretty direct. Um, just a really wonderful, echo-laden vocal from Pete. Really lovely, psychedelic kind of melody throughout this whole track. It's got a bit of a... Not like a nursery feel to it, but just a nice, pleasant, slightly psychedelic track. Um, a heck of a lot of fun to listen to. Call Me Lightning, Inside One. And um, this, I remember reading about this song years ago, as, as this was Pete's attempt to kill The Who in 1968. Because by this point, in 68, they weren't really selling a whole lot of records. That was a really dry year for them. Um, they were having a hard time with trying to keep up and they were on tour constantly and he was also starting to work on Tommy so his focuses were in the future and during that year they put out Dogs and Call Me Lightning and uh, Magic Bus that was pretty much it so you know kind of a dry spell for them that year but I remember reading somewhere that that was his attempt to kill the Who by writing a 1965 sounding single to see what would happen if people even buy it it's not really well remembered um, I mean it's a fun song I think the the riff on it is really cool and um I mean, the guitar work is really good. I think Roger's got a really good vocal on He sounds excited to be singing, and the drums are kind of, pep, you know, peppy. Um, not the best thing they've ever done by far, but still an interesting track, and it's nice to have on here, for sure. Side 2 opens with Magic Bus, easily one of my favorite Who songs of all time. I've said that forever. It's one of my favorites. This is the pretty common, standard U.S. stereo version of it. Um, the single, stereo single version of it. I love the crazy shuffle on this thing between the percussion with the claves. I love the acoustic on this thing. Um, the build-up at the end where it starts to get rocking and rolling again, and they start singing along. It's just a good sing-along type of song. Really fun, uh, upbeat, you know, can't go wrong with it. Plus, they named the album after it, so it must have been good. Someone's Coming. This is a cool song. Uh, great horn section on this one. I love the rhythm track. It's a really buoyant, peppy, rocking kind of song. Um... Very much in the pop tradition. It's got, it's got a great pop hook. I can even see the Kinks doing a song like this. But Roger's voice on this one is really cool and controlled um, as he delivers a song where the protagonist and this girl cannot meet up together anywhere because their parents don't like this dude and so they got to meet in secret. Um, you know, really good song. Doctor Doctor. I've always loved this song too. This one is, uh, this one's hilarious. It's about a, from what I can tell, it's just about a hypochondriac who keeps going to the doctor saying, hey, I have every disease known to human, known to humans. And, uh, you know, please, please help me get better. Please fix me. Please get me well. Um, the bass on this track is absolutely incredible. And this song has to win the award for most Who falsettos ever. Because almost the entire song is sung in a falsetto between the three of them, I think. Or at least Pete and, and, uh, and John. But um, it's a total rocker the whole way through and through. It delivers nonstop. It's just an excellent, fun track. Bucket T. Uh, Keith is doing his Jan and Dean here, uh, as, as we all know, he was a big surf fan, and so the Beach Boys, Shane and Dean, this is the kind of stuff Heath was into. And, um, you know, he sings this lovelorn song about a car that took three years of sweat and blood to clean off all that Tennessee mud. Um, I love the horn sections on this thing, the crashing nature of the entire track in general. It's just a fun, goofy song. It's not meant to be taken seriously. It's just a good, fun little track. Uh, then it ends with Pictures of Lily, which is a, uh, you know, a lovely ode to uh, love you'll never know and how uh, you know it might be a temporary fix but um, I, guitar work on this song has always been excellent 
Um, very good song construction. This was definitely Pete growing as a songwriter, um, building and arranging with more than just, you know, repeating phrases in the verses and choruses. There's a lot going on here, and there's a key change. But uh, it, there's a lot to appreciate with the construction of this song itself, and I think the vocals on them are great too. But that's kind of it. I mean, there's not a whole heck of a lot to say about this thing besides the fact that I would take off... Um, three tracks. I would take off I Can't Reach You, Our Love Was, and Run 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 and replace them with Substitute, I'm a Boy, and Whiskey Man or something. Um, just to pad it out a little bit better with some tracks that weren't available in the States so people weren't buying the same songs over and over again. Uh, here's the back cover. So it just shows the back of each album and then the song titles. So nothing too crazy there. And then you get your classic uh, rainbow label from the mid-70s. Which I've always liked that label, that's not too bad. Um, it's only been reissued on CD once, from what I can tell. It's it's not it was not part of the Who's reissue campaign in the nineties where they did all their albums. Um, so it was one of those late eighties, early nineties CDs, but I do have a copy. Um, which is very, very cool to have on C D. Never mind that old FYE sticker up there, but back in the day these MCA CDs would just have these backs just a boring back. I don't know why they did that. Why well, couldn't just press the record jacket back on here? Um, but, you know, it's just got the song song names on there, and, and that's it. And then the actual disc with a little flyer for what else you can buy on CD at that time, because um, that's how it was back then. So this was at least 1989, maybe, 1990. Um, oh, this happens to be a Canadian copy, I believe. Manufactured by Syndrome for MCA Records Canada, distributed in Canada by MCA Records Canada. Um, which is interesting because the uh, Canadian copy is apparently a more sought after one for the mixes on here. I'll have to replay this one. It's been a while since I've heard it and also I didn't even realize there was a Canadian copy. Um, which I think they're still making. I don't think this is anything rare then at, at that point. I think they're still printing this in Canada. Um, or I, they might not. I don't know. I'm not sure how many CDs get printed anymore. But anyway, that's that. I'll have to look at that later and, and follow up with you guys as to what that thing is. But um, yeah, that's it. This is uh, the whole review. So Magic Bus by The Who. I'd give this thing like a 7 out of 10 just because I love all the songs. But I think it could have been a little bit more effort to, on Decca's part at the time to uh, make something a little bit more substantial for The Who fans who already had a few of these songs and were a little more dedicated to just buying songs they already had. So... Uh, with that, my name is Gickens. This has been The Who, Magic Bus. Not not this one, not yet, not yet. That's going to happen. Um, let's go with an 8 out of 10, just because I love the songs on here. 8 out of 10, Magic Bus. My name is Gickens. This has been Album Reviews with The Who, Magic Bus. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Key change.